Hello, Ross. Uh, hello, Matt Rogers, the pop prince of Christmas. Look at you. I mean, <laughs> it's really not up to me. It's up to the adoring masses. I give it up to the capitalist process <laughs> now, really. I mean, well, they uh, have to uh, ingest it how they will. Uh, ho, ho, ho. I, I have to tell you, I watched your special. Um, you I cannot tell you how much. It was the thing I didn't know I needed Ugh. to celebrate the holidays. You guys, Matt Rogers, Have You Heard of Christmas is on Showtime right now. We have to talk all about I have so much to talk to you about. But first, yes. can I just make a declaration? Oh, God, please declare. I'm in Philly, so I'm, I'm in a place where, like, historically a lot of declarations get made. So Yeah, right now you it. are coming to us from Philadelphia, and you are at in a, uh, a posh resort in Philadelphia right now? Yeah, it's called the Best Western. I'm told that it's uh, <laughs> oh, some of the finest dignitaries have stayed here and luminaries <laughs> of the kind, you know. And, and the, the refrigerator is making an iconic sound. I don't know what it is, but. Have yeah, you gone downstairs to get that, that free continental breakfast? Have you oh, done that baby. yet? I just had about eight loose sausages. And I looked at the eggs and I said, nope, 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 not going to happen. I'm so proud of you for the restraint. (laughs) Well, here's my declaration. And I want to say this to the world. Uh, I, you know, I am very uh, proud of that that I'm a good person. I try to be a good person. You know, I I try to. Yeah, I think it's important to to, to be kind, to be nice. But every once in a while, we we mess up. We trip. Okay. It's good. Um, It's big of you. Mm-hmm. It is big of me. Uh, you texted me and I didn't text back. Like yeah, we was... met, you, no, I was, we met, you texted me, Gross, great to meet you. Cause I wanted to be friends. I'm like, oh my God, he's great. I'm so excited. And then six months later, we see each other again and you're like, Hey, never got it back. You know what though? Listen, know. listen to me right now. It was so huge that you even went as far as to Write your phone number down, old-fashioned style, and hand it to me on a piece of paper. Okay? We, the, we we went so far, and then I was like – and we had such an incredible interaction at something we can't discuss. And so, And then I was a like – A TV you know, show we shot that we can't talk about. We can't know. talk about it. Mm-hmm. And um, then I was like, this is off to the races. And then I – you know what I figured? He's a busy man. He's one of the busiest men in Hollywood. He's one of the funniest people alive. And I was oh like, he'll God. get to it when he gets to it. And I was also not worried about seeing you again. You know what I mean? Of course it was going to happen, but I've never been more mortified. And so I have made oh, a please. decision. I decided to tell the world because it's almost like <laughs> when, you, when you decide. Culture. Thank you. When you decide yeah. to go on a diet, you tell everyone in your life so they can mm-hmm. smack the pizza out of your hand. Exactly. I'm telling the world now, hold me accountable. Make me a better person. And thank you, Matt Rogers for being kind enough to forgive me because I am a Matt Rogers super fan. I oh. think you are. I think you are so funny, so talented, such a good actor, such a great singer, and you have such a strong point of view. I am just such a super fan. So thank oh, you for your forgiveness. Thank you so much. I mean, I respect you so much. I think you're just as a comedian, you're just, I mean, I just, it, it means the world to hear that from you. Seriously. Well, thank I mean, you that's so the much, cool but, part of this is I get to, you know, by extension through doing some, some of my work, I get to meet people I respect. And then sometimes they say nice things like that. So I'll, I'll be on cloud nine today in the best West Darren. And you know what? I, I think the reason I'm such a fan uh, of you and because of all your skills is, is they're all shown off in this Christmas special. I have to talk about Matt Rogers. Have you heard of Christmas? Which I think is the exact thing we need out of the, after the really rough few years we've had. I watched it and I had complete, a complete, huge smile, joy the entire time. It is so silly and so funny. And so as Drew Maryborg called it when you were on our show this week, so filmic, like it's so, it's just Thank beautifully you. shot as well. Where'd you, you shot that somewhere in New York, right? We, did, we shot it in Joe's pub. And so I, yeah. I, 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 but I was really, um, Joe's pub has such an iconic look that I wanted yeah. it to feel like it was um, in its own atmosphere. So like people who are big fans of Joe's pub might recognize the layout and like might see it as Joe's pub, but I wanted it to feel like it was completely almost obnoxiously de- decked out in Christmas, you know? So it totally the, was. And the you the team did an amazing job. And you told you it celebrate Christmas in such a way that's like almost like, um, cheese fest in that beautiful way. That's like more is more. Are you a more is more Maximalism. kind of person? Yes. I mean, the, look, all my references are like d- the big divas, right? I mean, Mariah Carey is really the North Star of the special. So for people who haven't yet watched it, it's basically it's a documentation of me trying to become the Prince of Christmas and join Mariah as the Queen of Christmas and the Christmas canon so that hopefully I can, you know, attach to the monoculture that is Christmas and make money after every year of doing it. You know what I mean? And it gets bigger it's and brilliant. bigger. 
Attach I yourself really, to Christmas. Everyone, cel- you know, a, a lot of people celebrate it every year. Hello. Yeah. Huge- and so I just thought like, oh, how do you do that? You make a Christmas album. Now, am I a pop star? No, not necessarily yet. But not you know, yet. again, I give it up to the capitalist adoring masses now. You can decide. Do you accept me as part of the Christmas canon or not? It's a vulnerable place to be in, Ross, to say, am well, I going to be seasonally ubiquitous or not? But I figure if not now, then never. I think you've really planted your seed uh, in terms of like, (laughs) hey, hey, you guys, give me give me a Christmas chance. And I have to say the show is a Christmas, a Christmas miracle is what it is, because it's so smart because it cuts between this this cabaret Christmas cabaret show um, in in Joe's Pub to these uh, like sketches that are so funny. I love the scene when you are sitting with all of your PR team and they all Mm -hmm. have high ponies. Just like (laughs) I said, they all need long extensions in the ponytail. I want them all. And you know, (laughs) a joke I cut was they're all named Katie, even Pat Regan, who (laughs) plays the boy. They're all named Katie and they all have the same hair. And I just I just wanted that aesthetic for my team. And that felt right for me. Uh, you know, it's so funny because one time, the first time I, I met Martha Stewart, I was on The View and she was wearing a, um, she was wearing a camel colored shirt and uh, apricot colored pants. Uh-huh. And everyone in her team was wearing the reverse apricot colored shirts and tan pants. You understand? Or and else. I, and I was like, it, it, or else. And I just yeah. remember thinking, that's it. That That's, that's success. power. You know what I mean? Being able to dictate the aesthetic of the people around you, that's true power. And I would like to think that the narcissist <laughs> version of Matt Rogers that I play, the heightened version of myself, was like, the girls better have their hair together today when I come to the meeting, and I want to see you in that gold chain with a turtleneck. Like, totally. I have a specific aesthetic for my girls. But yeah, yeah it was. it's really... um. I, my director, whose name is Jerome Max Hagay, like, I was meeting with him, and he really nailed it for me when he said... He said that he wanted the staged version that took place on Joe's Pub to feel throwback. Like, I've always wanted a very classic look, like, contrasted with a very modern comedy. And the reference he said, and I feel like you'll appreciate this, um, he was like, I've been told not to tell this to you because you might not get it, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Sandra Bernhard, I'm still here, damn it. I almost fell out of my chair. Because that was, when I was younger, that was a formative comedy album for me because i think i was like you know 13 14 when i discovered it on the streaming service rhapsody and wow it was like it was like i was being told from the future or from somewhere else out there like what my sense of humor was it was like Mm -hmm. her margaret cho it was very Mm -hmm. much like that sort of like alt stand up from like a very powerful woman on stage where they weren't afraid to burst into song. And so then when he said that, and I realized I have the opportunity to sort of throw it back to a style like that, that was what I really wanted for the stage version of it. That sort of whiskey soaked classic look of someone that was like really just going for it on stage and send to like contrast that with the sketches. I felt said what, what I was trying to do cohesively. I totally see that in there. And I actually, I remember thinking about San- Sandra when she was doing those albums, like mm-hmm. that she would be so funny and then she would sing in a way that wasn't funny. Like she was just a really, she was a good singer and she right. was giving it her all. And I remember thinking that was so vulnerable because on, as a comic, it's like we almost, we can never be the the sexy one. We can never be the singer. We can, we always kind of have to be the 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 joke or you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know what it is. You stop at taking yourself too seriously, right? Because as comedians, as the gestures, we're not supposed to take ourselves seriously or anything seriously. In fact, we're supposed to punch up. We're supposed to like say the truth. We're supposed to be the ones that are saying quote unquote, the thing. And then when God forbid you were to start to do something vulnerable or earnest, and then potentially you could be the thing that's Mm -hmm. weird because maybe you're not that good or who does this come person think he is that he has the right to do that but totally. i just feel like over the years what i've tried to do is eliminate the checkpoints i've really tried to and i'll be honest with you you know who was huge in me doing this was actually rue and just drag race in general yeah. just this idea that you have to eschew the rules you know you're it's all drag it all doesn't make sense and as long as you're having fun and everyone else is having fun and, well, and also yeah. on that show, to your point, you know, they, they do allow the contestants to be so well-rounded and try everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually am I'm very envious. I thought of that when, when I was watching your thing because I, I came up in a different way. I came up on Leno and was sort yep. of like, 
the joke until I had to prove that I was funny enough to stick around and blah, blah, blah. And yes. I was looking at you up there and I was thinking how freeing that he can, cause you know, I can, I love singing. I can sing, but I never yes. do it because it's like, uh, Oh, no one wants that for me or, so, you know, and I felt like what you did in this special, it was, you're just like, who, I don't care what, what you want from me. This is what I do. And you laid right. all your skills out there. And it just, it just was so great. Thank you. I think that in many ways I did know. I mean, I think people may have known who I was in like a sort of niche, like gay notable way. You know what I mean? People might know who I am as an extension of Bowen. They may know who I am because they watch I Love That For You or listen to the podcast or maybe they watch Fire Island. But I I knew if this was going to be an opportunity for me to introduce myself to people as who I am, I wanted to say, look, this is my sensibility. This is what I'm capable of. This is my, these are my interests. And even though it's a high concept special and that it's like about Christmas and it's musical, I still would distill this and say, I'm very confident in it as my debut comedy special because Absolutely. I am references. I am, you know, what I love. I am music like that. That Those are the things that make me excited and make me me. I mean, Whenever anyone asks me my comedic influences, I always say the way Mariah Carey coos a note, the way Celine Dion beats her chest and belts to God. Like, those are my comedic influences. Like, God love you if for you it's The Simpsons. Like, I understand. It's just not mine. And I don't uh -huh. think you need comedy or comedians to be your comedic influences. Like, and I think that's what's cool about, you know just just stepping out of it and doing that drag race thing, that Rue thing of like, fuck everything that makes sense like what's true to you and mm -hmm. so in that way i do feel like i'm just proud of it and can point to it and be like yeah that's me in that little hour that's me i love that and i love your references because I, i'm a pop culture super fan as well yes. and specifically like 90s was probably the best decade in the history of time for pop yes. culture maybe okay maybe the first 2000s because we had the the Lindsay. Uh, Paris, Nicole Richie. That was definitely, all. A, well, that was like a deconstruction of the 90s, right? So I totally. feel like the 90s was like when monoculture was at its best because it was like, you know, the internet was popping off. There weren't that many like news sources. So everyone was enjoying everything. I mean, I, I don't think it's ever um, going to be um, spelled out more than like Titanic fever. You know, Thank every you. single person in the world knows every word of that movie mm -hmm. and that will never happen again. And then I feel like in the 2000s, that's sort of like, that sort of like monoculture and like the worship of celebrity turned like a little darker totally. in a way that was both fun, but also now you're looking back and you're like, Ooh, dark, totally dark. It's not going to age well, but you no. know, but the nineties will age well because to your point with Titanic, I'm what I want the kids to understand just so everybody can figure out what the nineties was like. Titanic came out in late nineties. And mm -hmm. in the mid nineties, we had a Britney, a Christina, a In Sync, a Spice, Backstreet Spice Girls, yep. Spice. Thank you so much for Spice Girls, oh, and, yeah. and then of course the Celine of the of it all, Mariah. The, it was like the gay gods really opened up the heavens that decade. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look. I mean, from from like ninety five to two thousand, just in those five years alone, there was so many stars born, and we still mm -hmm. have them today. And then when you think about outside of that too, like in television, in movies, like that was the, really the era, the peak of Julia, Sandra. I mean, Jennifer Aniston on television. I mean, uh, hello, that's friends. Through, yeah, I must mean, see TV. All, all that stuff. And then Sex in the City started. So there's these things that now you see um, the culture really trying to replicate. And yeah. um, actually trying to hang on to in ways that feel both nostalgic, but also kind of sad because yeah. we really can't create um, because of the lack of the monoculture and how disconnected we are as a society. We really can't create new institutions. And that's why I actually decided that Christmas was the perfect entry point for me because it is Christmas will always be monoculture like. You know, people say there's a war on Christmas. I would tell them to go out into Times Square. Christmas ain't going nowhere. Your holiday yeah. is fine. Your but holiday's like, just fine. Because at, we all walk have through a, Target. Yes, <laughs> we all have a reference point for it, and therefore we all have an opinion on it. So whether you love Christmas still, like unapologetically, or want to drag it to hell, there's something there for you in it. Whereas, like with the stuff we're talking about, it's like it, you'd have to go back years to find things that we all even have a language for. Interesting. Yeah. You know, it's funny you talk about how like um people are trying to replicate the magic. How do you feel about because I have strong feelings about when they're remaking all these movies, like the new mm -hmm. Lion King. I don't think we needed it. I think it if terrible. I want to watch the if I want to watch the Lion King, 
I'll go watch The Lion King. Yeah, there's a perfectly great. good one. Perfectly good one. Yeah. Now they're doing The Little Mermaid. I'm, I'm open to it. The Beauty and the Beast. I didn't want it. The, the live action. I didn't want to see it, but I actually loved it. But like, yeah, so. you know, I just, what happened to having new ideas? What happened to having like a, making something brand new? I think that, you know, people probably have new ideas all the time. But the fact is you have to go to someone with the money and the influence and the decision making power and they have to say yes. And they just don't say yes to that shit anymore. They just don't like. But they said the, yes to you. That's that's what I was getting to is because of the because your comedy special, your Christmas special, is so unique. How did you convince them to do something? You had a brand new idea, and you had to yeah. say yes. It pulls from here and here and here, but it's it's never been done like this before. How did you convince Showtime and Bravo Showtime for putting it on? How'd you get them to do it? Well, this is what I'll say, and I love Showtime, and I, I'm on. I love that for you as well. But I which this- we're going to talk about because I love that show. By the way, yeah, with I Vanessa mean. Bayer. It's such a great thing in my life to have that show. But when I tell you, I pitched it everywhere. I pitched mm. it everywhere simultaneously. I, there wasn't like a pecking order. I just pitched it everywhere. Showtime was the only place that said yes. Isn't that and, interesting? And so, and it and it wasn't because the pitches didn't go great. I left every single one feeling confident. I felt like I represented the idea. You know, I thought I looked cute on the Zoom. The whole <laughs> thing. Like my reps were like, "That was great. They'd be crazy." Showtime was the only place that wanted to do it. I think because I had the relationship with them from I Love That For You. Uh-huh. And um, they also said yes to this back before I Love That For You was even picked up to series. So really? yes, they didn't even know that show was going to be good or a success or anything. So they really did take a chance on it. But when I tell you that, like, it's like this with, and I'm sure you know, but everyone I know has a very hard time. It's a really tough time right now to sell new ideas or any ideas at all because what people know is going to make money are properties that everyone knows. You know what I mean? You look at what makes money now and it is all the usual suspects. It is Fast and the Furious 12, you know, Minneapolis drift at this point. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. So Yes, and if, you, if, if, and if you're going to do something that is a little bit risky, they usually want like the hugest star in the world, you know, yes. Gaga Christmas special or something like that. So Bravo, and I have to say Showtime is doing such interesting uh, stuff. You know, they, uh, especially I love that for you is, is really, it's so good. If people aren't watching that, I told you, I dorked out of, uh, when we first met, remember the time after you texted that me, was so expect, but, nice. but that time when we met, yeah. because the show is so funny and, t- and twisted in a way, Vanessa Bayer from Saturday Night Live, of course, SNL mm-hmm. um, stars as like this girl who always loved like a HSN QVC sort of show uh, channel and would watch it obsess. And then she gets on it by kind of pretending that her cancer is bad. It's very twisted. And like, yeah, so she's got cancer as a kid. And the way yes. she gets through is she watches this, the home shopping network, or as we call it in our show, the special value network. And yes. then she gets the job as an adult fucks up and realizes she misses her chance. So sh- she says she has cancer again to use as an on-air hook. And it's that's so why they keep her on. Twisted yeah. and not okay, but also okay. hilarious. And but Jennifer you know what Lewis, like? the iconic she's Jennifer amazing. Lewis, plays what the I, boss and yeah, you're her she, assistant. She's like amazing. And what I love about it is it's about a good person who makes a mistake that on paper, especially nowadays, you'd be like, put her in jail. Fuck her. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. she'd Terrible. be like, canceled. canceled for for a lack of a better word, which is because it's such mm-hmm. an overused word. And now it's I understand. Like, whatever. I know. But canceled like, should be canceled. I'm for over real. it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, unless someone really earns it, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, know Kanye we're talking West, about? cancel him. Cancel Get him out of here. Yeah, Kick yeah. him all Harvey the way Weinstein, out. Harvey Weinstein, you're out. Yeah. You're out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're he out. really you is. Understand. I mean, and, and, and mm-hmm. not even on the earthly plane anymore. So <laughs> basically, like, um, can't get more canceled than that. But no. um, I, I just feel like, I do like that take on what is happening right now because it's not a one-to-one. You're not watching like, you know, it's about an assault and it's like heavy. It's like, yes, it's about cancer, which is dark and lying about it is dark, but it's such a goofy, silly show and you really are on her side. So in that way, you can like examine this thing about what it means to be a good person that does a bad thing and it not be too heavy because the characters are really fun it's a really fun ensemble i mean you mentioned jennifer molly shannon is also oh on God, the show so good. turning in a performance and a half and it's just every day it's like something so fun or and different and speaking of molly shannon so you you work with her on on i love that for you is it did you also write on the other two because that's my I other did. favorite show out there it is so outrageously funny. When I watched the other two, I paused it and I turned to my husband. And I was like, I need to know the team of gays that wrote this because this <laughs> is so 
hilarious. And uh, you talk about pulling from pop culture and sort of the references. It is so great. And, and if you're not, uh, these shows should be the number one and two shows on TV. They're so oh, outrageously gosh. funny. But so how do you do this? It's very interesting that you have this career where you're able to write. You have uh, your podcast with Bo and Yang, uh, who I met with you and who's been yeah. on this podcast, Hello Ross, yeah. as well. Um, and so, and now you're touring with this Christmas show. So what, like a well-rounded career you have going on. I'm curious, like what's next? What do you want to do? What's the thing? I think that you'll probably get this. Like when I say it is we do what we have to do to, to, to continue in this business and it's hard. And I have had many years of being able to cultivate all these different skills because no one was really watching. You know what I mean? Like I came up in New York comedy, um, and pounded the pavement. It's so funny because I never really saw myself doing that as a young kid that wanted to grow up and, you know, be a star or whatever. Like I never thought like, oh, the way that I'll do that is be by doing three shows a night, five days a week in New York. You know, I just yeah. never saw that for myself because I didn't see a lot of comedians like me, stand-up comedians like me. I just didn't, you probably understand this too. Like there was not really a foothold for how to be us. Totally. Um, and so in that way, I'm actually kind of grateful looking back because I did try to get good at everything. I went to school at NYU and got my degree in writing so that by the time I got hired for my first writing staffing job with the other two, I, I had that education. You know, like I had been doing sketch comedy for years, writing it, performing it. I did a little musical theater when I was in college. I just found ways to like do things I enjoyed so that hopefully one day when I got the opportunity, I'd be ready. And now that it's all like happening in a way which feels even crazy to say i think the thing i want to keep doing is act i think that that's really what i want to do is i would love to like continue to build my resume up in that regard because if i look back at the seven-year-old who was obsessed with titanic and was watching that movie and watched kate winslet turn around in that hat mm -hmm. and look at I'll the never titanic it. and say it doesn't look any bigger than the mauritania mm -hmm. the same way she was interested in bigger like me too in this regard. Like I, I really do want to keep doing interesting, cool, fun projects because another thing I don't take for granted is that in this year, I mean, if I'm to say what my three projects were, it was fire Island. I love that for you. And now have you heard of Christmas? And the, the, the thread through all of them is that I love talking to them, talking about them. And I love, um, you know, just, I know how rare that is that not everyone like goes out there to represent themselves and what they're doing and actually loves the project. So that's what I would like to keep up is just being involved in things that I think are really interesting or funny or with really cool, talented, inspiring people that represent something that I believe in. And I hope that that can come from acting because I really enjoy it. And I think it's the thing that challenges me the most and in terms of what I create, like I would love to do another show like this, which is a full album musical show. I have an idea for one, but um, it's still percolating. And but but yeah, I mean, performing is what I love to do. So that's that's what I'm interested in. Well, what's so exciting for me is like not only can you perform and like we talk about using all the tools in your tool belt that you really show off in this special, but you know you also have the ability you can be creating your own projects too, and that's really exciting as like which a fan of yours. Yeah, I'm really excited. And, you know, I was thinking, I was looking, of course, doing my research for this, that you were born in 1990, which I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I was born in 79. So I'm about 10 years older than you. And right. so I love to see what 10 years can do in terms of how you're being so welcomed by the entertainment industry and, and being so supported. And, you know, I, I'm, you're in a Best Western in Philadelphia. I'm in my house here on Long Island because I, when I moved to New York, uh, we bought a house out here and I was, I, I just found out you, you're from Long Island. Yeah. I grew up in what? Suffolk County. I was born in, I was born in Babylon, but I grew up in Islip and now my parents still live in West Babylon. I love that. So yeah. we're basically the same person now. If you're <laughs> love younger. Um, and with initials, I, initials switched M R R M. Oh, yeah. it's sort Wait. of, can you I know. ask, when you were growing up in Long Island, like what was your holiday tradition? Because I love how unabashedly hojo, holly jolly you are. You know, what, you know what's funny is it's like it was always about everything but the religious aspect of the holiday. Like it was so funny. Totally. Like I, I, that's part of what I riff on in the special. Like when I sing the song, Have You Heard of Christmas? He basically has no reference point or no knowledge of like yeah. why this holiday even exists. But he yeah. like knows that we need to be connected in it. Like he <laughs> knows it's important, but not necessarily why at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is sort of how I grew up with it. I mean, I knew Santa for sure. We all know uh -huh. her. 
and you know sat on his lap <laughs> that big queen nine, that big yeah. old queen and um so basically like it was very much the cultural aspects of christmas that i was responding to and was a part of like the gift giving the togetherness of family you know the the drinking at a certain point the merriness but you know that's what i think is so funny about christmas is it is so many things and can be so many things that like the way I celebrated Christmas was very just like suburban Long Island, gift forward, you know, yeah. decorations forward, cookie you get forward, together, cookie forward. You uh -huh. get together with the with the one extended family on one side on Christmas Eve and the other on Christmas. So, so there's it's diplomatic, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that and the gift opening like right away on on Christmas Day, you know, leaving the cookies out, the whole thing. You know, I love it's true. It's like I don't I don't really totally understand what the religious part is because I don't know the Bible so much. I didn't grow up with it. And so I right. think it, Jesus was born. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think he was born and that's Christmas. But like other things like like in the words of Mariah, frankincense and myrrh. I don't know her. Like, I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I thank I, you I, for quoting the three wise men. Yeah. I mean, it could have been five wise men, six, seven. I don't understand what 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 was three. I mean, that was the like, most iconic uh, thruple ever, I guess. Hilarious. The it's, first you thruple. Bring up, <laughs> you bring up Mariah. And so I just, you know, we started where you talk about that Mariah is the undisputed queen of Christmas, inspired you to do this, uh, to yeah. become the pop prince of Christmas, which is so funny. <laughs> have you heard from Mariah? Okay. So now that it's come out, I can talk about it. So basically... Bowen was invited as a guest on Cody Rigsby from Peloton's talk show, which is called LOL Cody. Yes. And so I don't know if you know, but Mariah has like a huge partnership with Peloton this December. It's sort of how she's like paying paying for it all this year. It's like kind of whoever <laughs> she partners with, like whether it's like, I don't know, Capital One, fucking Target, whatever. This year it's yeah, yeah. Peloton, okay? Okay. So she like, it was like, she like had a video of her riding a Peloton, like, like saying, it's time. Okay the whole thing she's yeah. partnered with peloton so bowen because he's the sweetest best my best friend was like mm -hmm. you need to be a special guest on the show so you can um promote the special and i was like that's so nice like and i was in the audience riding along while they did their interview and they would throw to me for jokes or whatever so mariah came out at the end and did a bit with cody and okay. it was like a oh two God. second bit and when i tell you it was like elusive chanteuse the house down it was like she appeared in a cloud of smoke came out did the bit and then left but before she left she's so she's of course in 98 inch heels and she's like Understood. up on this pat on this platform and i'm riding the bike the peloton bike like right next to her and i can tell it's like by design because they knew i'm a huge fan so she looks at me in the eyes and she says can you help me down and i don't know anyone that knows knows peloton knows you are snapped into that bike seat sure. by your feet so i nearly broke my legs trying to twist myself out of that thing i was like oh my god get out of here she needs your help she could fall the, cut the blood, off your legs if you need to literally the blood of the queen of christmas is not going to be on your hands like you've loved this woman since you were six seven years old like please like everything oh my god. and so i get out i literally touch her hand i i, I lead her down I, my hand was probably so sweaty aka peloton vibes mm -hmm. and i lead her over to her like security guard and i'm like do you have her this is precious cargo she gets up goes away i like almost pass out everyone's screaming so and then i turn around one before i get back into my seat and she's over in the corner and she's peering out the door and she just goes matt love you because i think someone on her team might have told her like just so you know like that's a huge lamb wait a second she said say it again the word she said she matt said love you and beforehand, Bowen told me that, so when Bowen was getting ready to go on, they had come to him and they said, Mariah would like to say hi to you. So it's like the queen beckons. So he yeah. had to go over and like say hi to her first and like, but then she came out and like did the surprise thing. Uh -huh. But that was truly surreal. Like can that I, was like unbelievable. Um, I, I can confirm something for you. Go. That her team probably did tell her you oh that's the map because i met mariah one time oh i was gosh. on this live television sag red carpets e wow and i'm hosting it was precious it was precious yeah. here when precious she was here. so stunning in that movie mm -hmm. so fab 
so fab. And I'm on the red carpet. All of a sudden, Mariah's walking down and she's not talking to any press. And I'm like, oh, Mariah's walking by. She's not stopped. She's not, I'm, like, I'm not stopping. All of a sudden, she stops and walks over to me and she has a fan. And she goes, my glam team just says I have to say hi to you because you're fabulous. So hi. And I was like, hi. And then she walked away. That's it. So someone on her glam team is plugged in to the cool gays. You understand yes. the gays that, that, and I'm, I'm, I've never called myself a cool gay, but the, you understand the ones who worship her enough that they yeah. deserve a pit stop and a hello and just a, a moment of eye contact. It's just, uh, I mean, she really does love the lambs. And apparently I heard afterwards that, um, someone on her team did, did, did like, let us know that they told her like, just so you know, Mariah, there's some real lambs in the, in the audience at the Peloton thing. Like there's some real lambs that that are on the bikes. And, and that's what they, she, she calls her fans, lambs. Lambs. We're in the lamely, we're the lambs. If any straight people are listening, that's what um, she yes. calls her fans. Yes, okay. right. Exactly. And thank you, straights, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank that's you. That's so amazing. Everyone's that, welcome here. Yes. Um, we would hate for anyone to feel uncomfortable out there listening just because something's wrong with them. You know what I mean? Like, don't. You're fine. <laughs> Um, so, so basically I, then, then, then apparently she turns to her team member that said this and she with wide eyes said, seriously, don't tell me that if there's not lambs out there, I'll be really sad if I go out there and like, no one cares. So Does she, she even know Mariah Carey, I think she knows, but she, she has a, a special place in her heart for the true lambs because we all know being a Mariah Carey fan has, is an up and down situation. Like. The highs are high, the lows are low, and the true lambs have really stuck through the whole thing. And I'm telling you, I'm a true lamb. You know the day that Glitter came out? September 11th, 2001. You know who was at the record store when my mom came and picked me up that day early because of a national tragedy? I thought she was picking me up to go get the Mariah Glitter album. I said, Mom, did you pick me up special to go get the Mariah Glitter album? She said, no, I just want you home with me. I said, why? What happened? She goes, I, I don't know how to explain. I'll explain when I get home. I was like, well, we have to stop by Virgin Records. She goes, Matt, I don't think it's going to be open. I'm like, why wouldn't it be open? It's Tuesday. Oh, my. That's your memory of 9-11? I was 11 years old. And I was, wow. I was literally all I had. I, remember, I remember Ross literally waking up in the morning, looking at my calendar, being like, it's September 11th, 2001. The day I've been waiting for, Mariah Carey's Glitter comes out. I remember writing the header on my paper, being like, can't wait to listen to Loverboy and Never Too Far when I get out of uh, class today. So my mom, I'm in the car, and she's like unable to, un- to explain to me what's happening. Of so course, I'm like, you're an 11-year-old kid. How she explain? I, and I'm, 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 like, I'm like losing my faculties. I'm like, mom, are you seriously taking me home and saying we're not going to get the album? I've been talking about it for weeks. She goes, okay. You know what? Because I think she realized then, like, she couldn't deal with all that was going on, and also me, like my little gay ass, like, like probably like throwing a fit. So she goes, yes. "We'll go to the record store." So we go to the record store. The, the employees are clearly traumatized. She had explained to me a little bit what was happening. I thought it was an accident because I, I couldn't understand at that point the magnitude of the evil. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. I was You're just, a little I, kid, and also pre nine eleven, we were all just different. You know, we just didn't understand. 100%. I had never heard the word terrorism. You know, I didn't know what that mm-hmm. was. So mm-hmm. they like, they like creak the door open a little. They're like, hi. She goes, hi, listen, the Mariah Carey album. It's right over there. I see it. Like he, he needs it. Like, um, they're like, we're closed, ma'am. She goes, I understand. Just please. Just the last thing you do today. I swear to God. I, I swear. They're like, okay, we bought the album. I took it home. I think I listened to it for like a couple hours before it actually sunk in what was happening. And then it was just like, oh, it became such a dark moment. But literally up until that point, I had been in this gay fantasia of Mariah. And so literally like I'm ta- I'm saying like and then obviously the glitter thing was a disaster. Like, you know, yeah, it, it was like, not everything. good. It was the whole thing. But like when I say like she is sh- like it. it that's that's the fan that's 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 how deep my fandom goes i got it and and i just want to tell you now that woman who you will always never of course forget that moment but like who you (laughs) worship she peeked around a corner after you have made this christmas special very much in her honor and she's a running sort of joke throughout about how you aspire to that she knows your name well maybe i think i think she at least knew my name in that moment They were like, maybe someone was just like, his name is Matt. He's a huge lamb. And then she said, Matt, love you. And then went home to rock and roll and never thought of me again. What do you, her kids rock and roll. What do you think? What would you, what would you do if you found out that she watched this special? You know what? I, I would hope that she 
thinks it's funny because and I and I hope that she feels like respected and honored and treasured by it in the way that I do feel for her because I also know that like you know I do write this song the hottest female up in Whoville like which is a song that she that that I make up that she writes from the perspective of Martha May Huvier and the Grinch yeah so like <laughs> so and, and I I write it in the style of like a Mariah Carey like 2000s like you know mid-tempo R&B song and I hope she feels like tributed by that and not yeah. in any way like you know I I just don't I, I I understand the sensitivity that comes with like, you know, being someone that people are watching a little bit now more than I ever did. And I just hope that she knows how much I love her. That's she, all there I is hope. no way that to, to watch this special and not understand how much you love Mariah Carey, how much you love Christmas and how talented, undeniably funny and talented and smart you are. Everybody, please check out Matt Rogers. Oh Have gosh. you heard of Christmas? It premiered on December 2nd on Showtime. Also, I love that for you. Is it coming back for season two? Okay, so they have written season two, but the show is not officially picked up yet because there's a lot going on with like CBS, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of boring stuff, but basically it's written. We're ready to go shoot it. And I've heard that it's really great. But if you love, I love that for you. Let them know, like tweet about it, be streaming again, like because the show does need a little bit of help right now. But I know the plan was to pick it up and then some things changed and now it's just sort of out of our hands in a corporate way. So be supporting well, the show. I hope it happens. And no matter what, season one is a triumph. The other two airs on HBO. You've written for that. Fire Island, of course. Out. Everybody's seen that. Matt mm. Rogers, I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, and as Ross. soon as we hang up here, I'm just going to text you again to reiterate <laughs> and try to crawl my way back into your good graces. And but we seriously. had so much fun on Drew Barrymore, too. That was such a blast. And also, I couldn't even believe that was happening. She's another one that I've loved my entire life. I, I don't even know how you do that all the time. Like, it's Drew Barrymore. One. I know, I know. It's weird. You you start to forget that it, it just becomes your friend Drew. But yeah, it is, it is very. At first, you're like, whoa. Even I still sometimes I'll look over and be like, oh my god, it's like Drew it's Barrymore. her more. I know it's her. It's I like a, it's like a true icon. Totally, totally. And so are and you. We're, well, th well, it took you long enough to say that about me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Matt Rogers, I am probably your biggest fan, and I'm so oh, uh, honored that you came on here. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the special, Have You Heard of Christmas? Matt Rogers on Showtime. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ross. Hello. Hi. Hi, it's me, Ross. Thanks so much for watching. means a lot. Make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe, and hang. Tell a friend. We're a lot of fun around here.